Hello and uh, welcome to lecture number 11 of the course Robot Motion Kit Planning. In the last class, we looked at uh, roadmap methods, that is we make a set of uh, pathways and then we connect the initial point to this uh, network of paths and then find the most suitable path that will take the robot from the initial point to the goal point avoiding obstacles. Today uh, we will continue with that discussion and then move on to the next topic which is uh, cell decomposition methods. That is how do you break uh, the, uh, the free space and the obstacle say, space into a number of cells and then how do you find a path which will take you from the initial point to the goal point. Okay, today we will be looking at cell decomposition methods which is the next method after roadmap. So very quickly I will complete a couple of points which are still left for the roadmap method and then move on to the next topic which is uh, cell decomposition methods. So in the last class we saw that roadmap methods basically uh, captures the connectivity of free space by a graph or a network of paths. Like the example is uh, Google Maps okay, which everybody is familiar with these days that if you want to go from some point to some other point Basically what it does is it finds a network of paths okay, and then finds which is the shortest path in terms of uh, distance and also maybe time okay, uh, to take you from one point where you are to the desired uh, goal position. Similarly, uh, if you look at this uh, example in the right hand side where we have uh, a workspace and there are obstacles. So uh, CB1, CB2, CB3 are obstacles and we have a robot at an initial point and uh, we want to go to the goal point which is marked here. So what the roadmap method does is essentially it generates a network of paths, a network of feasible paths. A feasible path means it should not go inside an obstacle, right? And then what it does, it connects the initial point to the network of paths and the goal point to that network and then find different ways of going there. So this is the basic idea of roadmap methods and from roadmap methods what we do get is we can get the most the best path which will take you from the initial point to the goal point right now there are other methods also like uh, visibility graph is also a roadmap method okay in which we generate uh, a set of no uh, pathways and then we find the connection between the initial point and the path and the network of paths or the goal point and the network of paths and then as you can see here there are multiple paths which can take the robot from the initial point to the goal point and then we find which is the shortest length path etc okay so these are all called uh, roadmap methods because they capture the connectivity of free space by a network of paths, by a network of feasible paths. Okay, and then they basically find the path which will take it from the initial point to the goal point. Visibility graph is another method in which uh, you can imagine that you are standing at the initial point and which vertices are visible to you, you connect it with straight lines. And then all vertices are connected to the other vertices by straight lines. And then it's a question of uh, going from one point to another point simply by uh, connecting, uh, finding the path which is the shortest length. For example, this one probably would be would be the shortest length path. Okay. Now, visibility graph also has a reduced visibility graph, something we looked at in the last class. So, reduced visibility graph. Now, in this vis reduced visibility graph, we basically remove the edges which are there in the concave parts. To make the uh, to make it faster okay so for this please refer to the previous lecture now the other method after this is or rather uh, the uh, the thought of the next method is that basically when human beings are going to avoid obstacles and go from one point to, to another point we don't actually go and go very near the obstacle and and almost go touching the obstacle okay and then try and go to the goal point like is being done here okay so in this case you're going from the initial point to the node, then you're going to the next node and you're going to this node and then you're going to the goal point. Now that is something which human beings do not do. Why? Because there is a chance of an accident because of uh, wrong data, okay, wrong sensor data. So the distance data from the robot and the obstacle is not very accurate. There is a chance the robot will hit the obstacle. Okay. Now to avoid that, what we do is we try and find a path which will go in between the obstacles like this, right? Keeping a safe distance between two obstacles. That is what we do or any biological entity does. Now, uh, the idea there is basically to find equidistance between obstacles and the workspace and boundaries. For example, in this particular uh, case, we are basically going to find equidistance relations. 
uh, between uh, an edge and an edge. So you can guess that there are two obstacles like this. So this is one edge and this is another edge, one vertex and another vertex rather. Okay. Now what will be the equidistance path? Equidistance path will be something like this in between them. Now if on one side you have a flat a straight line, other side you have a vertex like this. What will be the equidistance path? It will be something like this. Okay. How do we start? We basically start by finding the shortest distance here. So between this point and this point, that is the equidistant point. Then similarly between this point and this point, that is the equidistant point and continue like that. Now if a surface has two edges like this, then the equidistant path will be in between. And uh, this is basically the idea of deformation retracts where uh, we are trying to generate a Voronoi diagram that is going from the start to the goal point by, use, by using a network of paths which are equidistant from the obstacle and the workspace boundaries. So this is a network of paths and how did we get them? They are basically equidistant. So this line here is equidistance between this and this. Okay. Now this here is equidistance between this side and this side. So now if you want to go from some point to some other point, basically what we do is we connect to this graph, follow a pathway and suppose this is my goal and I go from here and I simply go to the goal. Okay. So again you can see that this is a network of paths or pathways, feasible pathways. Okay. And uh, the advantage of this is that it is safe, it does not go too near the obstacle so there is no chance of hitting the obstacle or the wall. Now these are also called. Uh, Voronoi diagram, this is also a Voronoi diagram and uh, this process is basically called deformation retract. It is like say, it is like uh, if this were to expand and this were to expand, they will go and meet there. Okay, it is like both the sides are deforming and then they are going and meeting there. So similarly, if you look at a donut shaped object like this, if this one is shrinking and that one is expanding, where will it meet? It will meet in one dimension circle like that. Okay. So this is basically what is called a deformation retract. Now there are other methods, fast methods by which you can make this deformation retract. Bushfire algorithm is one of them, where the object is marked as one, okay, the figure, uh, the number one, and then the adjoining cells. So this is basically a grid kind of a uh, grid workspace. And a computer can compute this very very quickly. So uh, this is given one 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 one, and the next uh, grid. The next grid to 1 is given 2, then 3 in that order. So you can see this is 2, then 3, 4 in that order. Similarly, from the work side, from the boundary of the workspace, we start with 1, this becomes 2, then 3. Now you can see that it can go maximum till 4 and then it starts meeting. Okay. So similarly, what, what, what happens is if you look at this, uh, so the one on the right side is showing the completed assignment of all the grid numbers. So whatever is the largest number that has been assigned, that is the one where uh, the, the two sides are meeting. Okay. So for example here, this is the case where if you expand from here and you expand from here, this is what you will get. So this is basically my deformation retract. But a computer would find this very easy to compute and do because this is in a grid form and these are numbers. So it can do, you can write an algorithm very quickly to do this and find the deformation retract. Okay. Now if you are uh, here. See, I have initial point. You simply can connect to the node. And suppose you want to go here. This is my goal point. So you can simply follow this path like this, like this, and go there. Okay. So this is basically called the Bush file algorithm. Now, uh, moving forward, uh, we are looking at a torus. Now we saw that for a two degree of freedom serial arm. Suppose we take this example. We did this a few classes back, where you have an arm, two degrees of freedom. And there is an obstacle. Now the C space for this would look something like as shown here in a torus. Okay. Now there is an obstacle there. So maybe part of the obstacle is going to come here on the surface of the torus now. Now I want to do path planning on this torus. Now please note that the torus is 2D basically. Yeah, and sorry, the torus has two variables theta1 and theta2. But when you draw it, you require x, y and z. In terms of dimensions. Okay. So now if you want to do path planning, let's say this is my obstacle. I want to do path planning on the torus now. Now, how do you do path planning on the torus? Okay. Now again we have eyes, so you can see very clearly. Suppose I want to go from here to here. Okay. So this is my initial point, this is my goal point. How do I go? Okay. So although we have eyes, we can see it's not very clear. How would you go? Would you go around like this? Would you go from under here? Okay. How would you go? 
and if you take the projection it simply becomes a 2d to a two ellipses okay, which is of not much use so this part is fully blocked okay, if i take a 2d projection now what about the back side okay, so if you want to go from here to here do you go like this or is there any other way now to look at this kind of a problem uh, we move on to what is called the silhouette method okay now we're taking this example of uh, of the silhouette method using an ellipsoid kind of structure so this is an ellipsoid okay that means an ellipse in 3d so it's an ellipsoid now this ellipsoid has a hole in there okay so this is the like it's a cylindrical cut which is inside there you can imagine that i hope okay. now i want to do on this uh, particular surface i want to do path planning suppose i want to go inside here that's my goal point and my initial point is here now how do i do now this is similar to this that this is a torus which is uh, something like a 3d structure now this is also a 3d structure which is an ellipsoid with a hole and i want to do path planning here now in the silhouette method what it basically does is we have the ellipsoid which is s okay with a hole now let us say that we have a hyperplane or a plane which is pc okay, this is a plane now we can call this a cutting plane hyperplane or cutting plane okay now this cutting plane will slice this ellipsoid at various points right so let me draw my x axis like this this is my x axis that's my y axis and that's my z axis so this hyperplane is basically in the z and y z y plane okay now in the x axis what i will do is i am going to divide this x axis into a number of points and for each of these points i'm going to pass the plane so when i pass the plane at zero if this is my zero then where does it cut the ellipse it cuts the ellipse like this the next what i would do i'll increment this x by one unit it is one okay, the plane is there now okay so the plane comes here okay. now you can see that it is going to cut the ellipse where is it going to cut the ellipse it will cut the ellipse somewhere here like this at the red line okay so we keep moving this hyperplane in this direction and we take keep taking slices okay so this hyperplane is going to sweep through s in the x direction uh, and then at every inter at every slice what we are going to do we are going to see where is the boundary of that ellipse okay so at each point the slice travels along the x we will find the extrema points what are the extrema points uh, they are basically the extrema points are these points okay so we are going to get this curve and what is the extrema points the extrema point is this point and that point okay, on the curve so extremal points in y in the slice is given by this now okay so this is my x axis y axis and this my z axis so i took the slice what what i got is this curve by cutting the ellipse now in that what i'm going to do i'm going to take the extrema point this point and this point okay and these are the extrema points uh, in y in the slice s that uh, intersection pc okay now if we trace these out we get what is called the silhouette curve so what am i doing i'm going to cut this uh, using slices and every slice i find the extrema points and in the extrema points what we do is we get our so this is my uh, uh, these are the extrema points on the curve okay now uh, the observation that we need to observe here is that the silhouette curves are one dimensional okay now this is not a road map because they are not connected please note that these are not connected the way i do it even here so we get one curve here and we get another curve there so these are not connected so if i take the extrema points one point is here one point is here okay but these are not connected now there are points where extrema disappears and reappears these are called critical points now because the structure is such that there is a hole in there so what will happen is there will be places where the extrema is going to disappear and, and reappear again and these points are basically what we call critical points okay so there are points where the extrema disappears and reappears and these are called the critical points and the slices that go through these points are called critical slices now a point on a silhouette curve is a critical point if the tangent to the curve at the point lies in pc now if you can imagine a little bit what am i trying to do maybe if i want to do path planning i want to go inside here that's my goal so basically i need to find this point i need to go inside that hole right the cylindrical hole so i need to locate this point and once i locate this point then i can go inside okay so what the critical points are doing is basically they are trying to locate where there is a change in the silhouette uh, in, in the curve right so uh, 
this slice, in this slice, as you are going from here, what will happen is this is my critical point now. Okay. So, we will connect a critical point to the rest of the silhouette curves and a path that lies within SP. Okay. So, now what we were doing till now is we were taking slices and at every slice, I am going to get my critical points which are here, which are here. Now, the case where there is a critical point, what we do is for that particular slice, we take, we connect the critical point with the silhouette curve here. Okay. So, we will connect a critical point to the rest of the silhouette curves with a part that lies in uh, S intersection PC. Okay. So, what we can do is these are my uh, silhouette curve. Okay, that is my silhouette curve, right. So, what I do is now I want to go inside the cylinder. So how do I go? I can go like this. Now, this is the critical point. So, I have to go like this and then I can go inside. Okay. So, I hope you can get the idea of why this critical point is important. Because in order to go inside, I need to find where is the critical point. And then once I get the critical point, now I know that I can go inside that hole now. Okay. Now, uh, the recursion is repeated until there are no more critical points or the critical slice is uh, dimension 1. The road map is the union of all the silhouette curves. Okay. So, what we are getting is uh, the, the road map is the union of all the silhouette curves. Okay. So, now suppose I want to go from here to there. Okay. I have got my curves like this. Now, these are my points on the silhouette curve. So, what I do is I basically go like this. Now, this is a critical point. So, I can simply go like this. Now, I can go inside then. Okay. So, now we understand how to go inside this uh, ellipsoid which had a cylinder inside by using the silhouette method. This is called the silhouette method. Now, uh, uh, now let's come back to what where we started. That is the torus. Okay. Now, can I use the same method for the torus? Okay. Now, if I use the same method for the torus, what I'm basically going to do is I will have uh, the hyperplane, the plane, which is cutting the torus like this. Okay. So, if it cuts the torus, it will be cutting here. Okay. So, I move this in this direction. Okay. In uh, if this is my x direction, that's my y direction, and that's my z direction. So, in different intervals of x, I'm going to move this uh, this uh, slicing plane, and at every point, I'm going to get the silhouette curve. Okay, this is the points okay, where the curve is cutting. Okay, so there is one here, one there. So this is my silhouette curve, right? Now, uh, if I take the projection of this, okay. Now, what is going to happen at the critical values? Because at this point, you can see like there is a hole inside. Okay, so this is my critical point now. So in the the slice through the critical values, you'll get one here, if you can imagine, and one here, like this. Okay, so when I cut the when I cut using the plane here, what would happen is here I'm going to get one curve only, it's continuous. But at that critical point, there'll be two curves now, one this side and one this side. So if I take the projection on my x y plane, what I'll be getting is these two curves are getting projected here on this line. Okay, right? That's uh, that's what uh, we have uh, got now. Okay, so we were able to get. Uh, the projection of the ellipse on on this curve now. Okay. Now suppose I want to go from some point to some other point now. Okay. Now you can guess. I'm sure that what is the use of doing this. Okay. Now uh, suppose I want to go from this point to uh, to here. Okay. Or rather, if I'm here and I want to go here, this is my initial point and this is my goal point. Okay. Now how do we go? So, if this is my silhouette curve, the side boundary which I'm getting, these points I've got, right? So, from here I can go like this, I can go like this, I can go like this, and I can go there. Okay? So, this silhouette uh, curve, okay, is actually giving me the path which I can follow. This is a type of a roadmap now. Okay? So, I'm going to start from initial point, go like this, follow the curve here. Now, that's a straight line which is having a critical point. Then I cross over here. I go like this and I go there. Now, if you simply look at the ellipse without doing this, it will be difficult to figure out how do you go. So, what did I do? I went from somewhere here. I was here. I went uh, somewhere here now. Okay. Without doing that, without doing this, it will be difficult to know how do you move on the surface of the ellipse. But once you do this, use the silhouette method, it becomes very clear that how you are going to go from one point to another point. Okay on this torus. 
these are some more examples accessibility and departability okay some examples here so suppose uh, you have an ellipsoid again like this and this is an obstacle okay so what we do is basically i'm going to make my uh, the hyperplane i'm going to pass my hyperplane and this hyperplane is going to touch it there and this is my critical point now okay so the first thing we do we slice it and get our hyper uh, critical points now i've got my critical point here 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 and here okay and then what i do is uh, uh, what i do is suppose i want to go from s which is my start point to my goal point i can draw another slice through here okay and this is a path it is giving me a path here this is my path and i can go to my goal point here avoiding this this and this okay now i hope you understand you uh, understand what how this method works that by simply slicing this what we are doing is we are getting a series of connected paths which is taking me from the start point to the goal point and this method is called the silhouette uh, method okay now so much for roadmaps roadmaps are basically generating a network of pathways okay now the next method is basically called cell decomposition method now as the name indicates the cell decomposition method basically decomposes the cell the workspace into a number of cells okay and there are different methods which are used here number one is polygonal cell decomposition second is uh, trapezoidal cell decomposition then we have uh, the moose uh, cell decomposition okay then we have uh, this uh, bostropondin cell decomposition then we have moose decomposition and sensor based coverage okay these are most more or less used for exploration so exploration is one coverage is the other okay so the point is not only that suppose i have a work cell and i have an obstacle here okay the robot has to go from here to here that's just one problem now it could be such that the robot actually has to explore everywhere and not simply go from one point to another point okay suppose it is mapping the area the other is coverage suppose there is a vacuum cleaner which is cleaning this room suppose this is a room and this is a table then it has to cover all the points okay that means it should not leave any point uh, uncleaned so that is where basically this coverage algorithms come inside and these three are basically coverage uh, algorithms how the robot can cover all points not only avoid obstacles so let's start off with the first one which is polygonal cell decomposition now as the name indicates the polygonal cell decomposition basically works like this so a convex polygonal cell decomposition is a finite collection of uh, convex polygons called cells such that the interior of any two cells do not intersect and the union is equal to the free space okay now what this means is that this is my workspace okay and these are the uh, vertices there okay and these are my obstacles in here so this one is also a green obstacle okay so this one is also a green obstacle now convex polygon decomposes this total workspace into a number of cells okay by a collection of finite collection of polygons such that the interior of any two cells do not intersect and the union is free space so let us start off by uh, how this proceeds is let us connect okay all these vertices to the vertices of the object so there is one here there is one there one here okay then there is one here okay there is one here Okay, then uh, this vertex is this vertex is coming here. This one is coming here. It's coming here. I'm just connecting all the convex vertices. Please note that they are convex polygons. Okay, so uh, the other connection we are making is here, here. Okay, then we are making a connection here, here. Okay, so these are all connections. I'm connect connecting the vertices. okay i made my connections okay so i have divided the whole workspace into a connection of cells okay by connecting the nodes and the vertices okay now what we can do is we can number the cells we can uh, number the cells let's number the cells this is one okay, this is one this is two this is three 
this is 4, this is 5, and then this is 6, that one is 7, that's the 8, that is 8, this is 9, okay, let's say this is uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Uh, calculated I have uh, connected all these cells now if I want to make a connection diagram now what is the objective the objective is to take the robot from some initial point to some goal point okay so what I can do is I can make a connection diagram now one is connected to two two is connected to three three is connected to four four is connected to seven four is also connected to five okay seven is connected to eight eight is connected to nine nine is connected to ten now five is also connected to six 6 is connected to 11, 11 is connected to 10. Now 1 is also connected to 15 and 14. Okay. Right. So we have got out, there is a connection here also. One here, one here. Okay. So these are all the connections in between the cells. Right. So I have connected, I have put numbers onto all the cells and I have connected the cells. Now I know exactly what the connection diagram would look like. In fact, this red line is showing you the connection diagram. So if you want to go from cell number 1 to cell number 11, how would you go? So you, you can uh, choose two ways. You go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 11 or you go for 1, 15, 14, 13, 6 and 11. Okay, there is a third path also 1, 15, 14, 12, 10, 11. Okay, so this is basically giving us a I have divided the total workspace into convex polygons called cells and uh, I can find up uh, connections okay, between cells now. Okay. So I have uh, done my connections and uh, this is my uh, connections between the cells. Okay. Now once we have got the connections between the cells, now suppose I want to find the path so these are the connections red line okay now i want to find a path to take me from a from one point to another point okay so how do i do that now that's very simple and very interesting in the sense that if you look at this now now which will be the path now what i do is i take the suppose i have uh, i want to go from my initial point here okay this is my initial point okay and this is my goal point let's say goal point is right here that's my goal. Okay. So from initial to goal, I see that I can go from 1, 2, okay, then 3, then 4, and then uh, 7, uh, 4, 7, 8, okay. and then, then it's a 9. Okay, that's the path. Okay. The, this is the different cells that are there, right, to take me from the start point to the goal point. But now what I can do is, I can very uh, very cleverly take the midpoints of the path, uh, midpoints of the sides or the edges. So I take the midpoint here, midpoint here, midpoint here, midpoint here, midpoint here, midpoint here. Okay, and I simply connect it. This one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. I've got my run to my goal. Okay. So first, what I do is I make my connections. Okay. Then I take the midpoints. Uh, midpoints of the edges and connect them by straight lines and that is how we get our uh, how to go from one point to another point okay this is called polygonal cell decomposition because we are dividing the total workspace into a number of uh, convex polygons and then I find I number the different uh, cells find the connection between the cells and to find the path I simply take the midpoint of the uh, edges which are making up the polygon okay and I simply connect it and I get my path okay now a computer can do this very very quickly and this method is called the polygonal cell decomposition now uh, then uh, the other method in cell decomposition is trapezoidal cell decomposition in the case of trapezoidal cell decomposition as the name indicates and you would be guessing by now so we are going to divide it into a number of cells okay so the free workspace is divided into 2d cells that look like trapezoids and uh, so the input to the algorithm is the vertices of workspace coordinates and vertices of obstacle coordinates so this is my 
coordinates of the vertices of the workspace and these are coordinates of the vertices of the object right so this is the input to the algorithm now what the algorithm basically does is it has to divide this into a number of uh, cells in the previous case it was polygonal cells here it is trapezoidal cells now how it does that is uh, it takes it every vertex and draws a straight line so from this vertex uh, it is going to come down here okay uh, in this vertex is going to go up this vertex will come down this vertex will come here and up up there this vertex will go there okay so I, I hope you can see what is going on so what is going on is that we are dividing this into a number of cells okay once I have divided this into a number of cells, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to number them just like before. So one, two, three in that order. Okay. And go on and then find the connection between the cells. And once you have found the connection between the cells, how do you find the path? You simply see the connection of the cells to form the path and take the midpoints of those uh, straight lines. And then you have your uh, path. Okay. So let's see how this is done. So how this is done is... Uh, in this particular case we have seen that uh, okay let me so the path planning is done in two steps the path planner determines cells that connects the start and the goal then the planner searches for a path within the ad adjacency graph okay let's see how uh, it is done okay. so at each uh, of these uh, vertices okay what we are going to do is we are going to draw straight lines okay. now at each vertex draw line segments one going up and the other going down lines do not go through obstacles Okay, I'll just explain. So what we are going to do at a vertex is I'm going to draw a vertex like this down and from here I'm going to draw it up. It will not go through obstacles. Okay, it should not go through obstacles. Okay, now wherever there is an edge like this, this, in this particular case, it is going to go up and down at every vertex. So in this vertex, we're going to draw a line up but not down because it is going through an obstacle. Okay, in this vertex, we're going to draw a line down but it doesn't go through an obstacle. Okay. So this is what we are going to do and divide this into a number of cells. Now once we have divided this into a number of cells, I am going to uh, number the cells 1, 2, uh, 4, 5 in this in this way. Okay, So each cell has been given a number. Okay. Now, now we know the connection between the numbers. Okay, so for example, C is connected to 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 is connected to uh, 8, this is connected to 10, 10 is connected to 11, this is one, this is another one. Okay. And there is another one going on top. This is connected. That is connected. That is connected. This is connected. This is connected. And uh, this one is also connected. Okay. So now I know which cells are connected to which cells. And now if I want to find a path, what I do, I simply take the midpoints of those lines and I simply connect it. Now that's the path which is going to be equidistant from the obstacle and the workspace. And that is going to give me a connected graph now. Now, how do we run the algorithm? Now in path planning, or motion planning we are worrying about algorithms now algorithms basically means a program right now this program has to automatically decide now we have eyes so you can see I've said this many times I guess that we have eyes so it is very easy for us to see okay suppose you want to go from here to here okay there is a path like this like this like this but the poor robot doesn't have eyes okay and the program doesn't have eyes of course so how would it basically divide these cells so what we do is we start off with a, a straight line. Okay, so we start off with a straight line, okay, and uh, sweep the straight line. So this is basically sweeping sometime back we had also looked at the uh, the sweep line algorithm, okay, the, uh, in, in the case of the Voronoi diagram. Now here also we have a straight line like this which we are sweeping. Okay. Now, as we are moving, whenever the straight line hits the vertex, now geometrically, we know the equation of the straight line, we know we can find out if the vertex is lying on the straight line. Okay. So, the moment we, it hits the straight line, we know that's a vertex and it's a line which is going up, which is going down. So, I move the line a little bit more on the right until it, so I'm sweeping this line in this direction. The moment it hits that, I know it's hitting a vertex and then I take it up and I take it down. Now, I know it's hitting here and it's hitting there. So, that's my first cell. I'll repeat it. So there is a straight line which is being swept in this direction. Okay. So here when it is hitting the vertex, I know this line is going up and this line is coming down. Okay. So it is the straight line. 
So I get this point, I get this point, I get this point. Now I sweep it more this side. Okay, what happens? It hits, I get this one. Okay. Now it should not go through an obstacle, so it does not go through an obstacle, right? It just ends there. Then I get this one. Okay, then uh, the sweep line gets this one. Okay, on top it gets that one. Okay. So in this way, what it is doing is it is sweeping through the space. The straight line is sweeping through the space, and we are getting this connected graph. Okay. So then what we do is we draw this connected graph of cells. Okay. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4. We can see that this is one connected 1, 2, 3, 4, then 7, 14. This is one branch. 7, 14, 15. Now from 5, 8, 10, 11, 5, 8, 10, 11 is one branch. Okay. And the other branch is coming this side. C3, 6, 9, 10, 11. 6, 9, 10, 11. Okay. And from this side it is coming to 13, 14, 12, 10. 13, 14, 12, 10. Okay. So what we are seeing is we are getting the connection between the different cells. Okay. Connected graph of cells. Now suppose I want to go from some point to some other point. Okay. What we need to do is I simply need to join the midpoints okay, as usual. From the connected graph, suppose I want to go from the uh, one point to another point. Let, let's have a look at this. I want to go from the start point to the goal point. What I will do is I will look at C1. The start point is in C1, so it is in C1. The goal point is in C15. It's in C15. Okay. Now I know which is the path. So this is the path. Okay. Uh, path in terms of the cells. Now how do I get the path actually in terms of points? What I do, I take the midpoints of these lines. So I take midpoint here, midpoint, midpoints of these uh, straight lines. Okay. And I simply connect it like this. And that is going to give me the path which will take it from the start point to the goal point. Okay. Now uh, the algorithm is basically using the sweep line method. Okay. And the ultimate goal of the sweep line method is to divide it into trapezoidal cells. And then once we get the trapezoidal cell, the lens okay, of the straight lines, then we can find the midpoint. Okay. Now the sweep line, it uh, sweeps through the free space stopping at the vertices. So we sweep the straight line. This is my straight line. So I start off here. I sweep it until it hits a vertex. The moment I hit a, it ver hits a vertex, it goes up or down depending on whether it's going through an obstacle or not going through an obstacle. So if it is going through an obstacle, it doesn't go anymore. It stops there. Okay. The next is, as we are going, we have to maintain a list of all current edges and slices intersects. And we keep updating that main list depending on the way the upper line uh, upper lines are intersecting. Now, depending whether the vertical lines are above, below or through the obstacle, decide on the midpoint of the segments. Okay. This is basically the working of the algorithm. So basically what it is doing, this is a straight line. Okay. So it is starting. So what it is doing is we have got the straight line hitting the vertex consisting of E8 and E13. So E8 is here and E13 is here. So what we have done in terms of the algorithm is that we have noted the vertices okay, plus the edges which are marked. Then we are going to maintain this set. It starts sweeping and here it is E8 and E13. Okay, So E8 and E13 is the first vertex here. The next it goes a little bit more right. What happens is it hits this one. Okay, so it hits E8, E0, E3 and E13. Okay, so it sweeps a little bit more. You can see it is hitting now E8, E0, E3, and E13. Now, when it is hitting the vertex, we also check if it is going through an edge. If it is going through E3 like this, okay, then we discard the upper part. Similarly, from the top, when it is coming down, hitting an edge, then is it going through the edge? Okay, that we can check very easily. And then we discard that part. We just stop it there. Okay, so we keep updating this list as it as the line is sweeping. And then finally, we come up with the, the total list of uh, vertices and the lengths of the line which are going there. Okay. So after doing that, what we get is uh, this, the final list that will come out will only consist of the, vert the lines, the length of the lines which are being drawn. Okay. So for this one, we'll have the full one. This will have only from here to here. This will have from here to here. Okay. That is how we are maintaining our list. Now. Uh, this is basically to show the or to find a path from an initial point 
to a final point by a connected set of uh, roads and this method is called the cell decomposition method because we are breaking it up into cells. Now path planning is not just uh, about finding a path. If for example, uh, uh, as I said that we have uh, a workspace and an obstacle space and I want to go from this point to this point. Okay. So one point is one one of the applications is just to find a path avoiding obstacles. Okay. But there are other requirements for covering or exploration the, or exploring the full workspace. Exploration means suppose the robot doesn't know that there is an obstacle here. Where is the obstacle? It has to explore this area and find out where are the obstacles, where are the paths. Other applications are places like demining. These are defense applications where uh, the, the mines are laid in particular ways and the robot has to actually find out these mines. Okay. So this robot, in order to do that, the robot has to cover all the space. It cannot leave any space. The third is very common these days is cleaning. So automatic vacuum cleaners, for example. So automatic vacuum cleaner. Okay. So automatic vacuum cleaner is supposed to vacuum clean. Let's say I have a room like this and I have a table. And the vacuum cleaner is supposed to clean everywhere. So the question that come that is being asked here is, it is not a question of going from one point to another point. It is a question that I have to cover. Now, how do I cover? Do I go like this? Do I go there? Do I go here? And do I come back like this? Is that a better way by covering everything and not leaving any path? Okay. Or uh, should I take some other path? Should I do this part first? Then I do this part. Then I do this part. Do I, then I do this part. Okay. How does it guarantee that I've covered everything and I have not missed out any part? That is the meaning of what we call uh, uh, exploration and coverage algorithms. So exploration and coverage uh, algorithms. Okay. So the basic idea of co coverage is that uh, the planner determines an exhaustive walk through adjacency graph. Now this adjacency graphs are basically cells which are connected. Okay. So connected cells. Now the planner computes explicit robot motions within each cell. And in this particular case, exact information is required. For example, we have a workspace. This is my workspace and this is my obstacle. Okay. I want to clean the full area or I want to cover all the area. Okay. Or I want to perform what is called an exhaustive walk. That means I want to go everywhere in this cell. So what we can do is we can break it up into cells or adjacency graph. So I have broken it up into cells like in the previous case, trapezoidal cell decomposition. And then I start cleaning each of the cells one at a time. That will ensure that I have covered all the cells and there is no cell which is left. Okay. Now, uh, how do we do that? So this is called uh, uh, boost up and then uh, decomposition. The disadvantage of this uh, trapezoidal decomposition is that there are too many small cells that are formed. So whenever we looked at this uh, trapezoidal cell decomposition, we saw that, let's, let's just go back to this figure, yeah, here. So you can see that there are so many cells which are being formed here, okay. Now if you start cleaning one cell here, one cell here, there are too many cells and it gets, uh, in a way, it gets a little confusing, okay. So if you want to simplify it, what is done here basically is that only vertical lines that can be extended up or down in vertices are considered, okay. Such vertical lines are called critical verticals. And the rest of the lines, other lines, other lines are uh, ignored or erased. Okay, so the lines which can only go up and down from a vertical, uh, from a vertex, is uh, kept. The other lines are all deleted. So from this vertex, you can see that this line can go right up and right down. There is no vertex here, so this two can go. So this is not required. Similarly, this one can go up, it cannot go down. So this is also gone. Okay. Now this one, the line can go up and the line can go down. Here the line can go up and the line can go down. So this gap, this is deleted, this is deleted. So what you get is this now. This is a much more clean, okay, this is a clean uh, space. Okay. This is a better representation. Now if I want to uh, do uh, path planning, sorry, not path planning, I want to do uh, the coverage algorithm basically. So what I can do is I need to find the connection between the cells. Okay, so I have found the connection between, let me go back to the previous one. 
I can find the connection between the cells. Let's say one, two, three, four. Okay, and then there is one more, which is five. So there are actually only five cells. Okay. Whereas if I had done the previous case, that is this case, uh, how many cells would there be? So there will be one, two, three, four, five, six, month, like that. Okay, so here actually there is only five cells. So I have a connection only between one, two, three, four. Okay, and one comes here, five, and that was there. That's enough. So if I want to now move the robot to clean its cell, I can go from one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, and my job is done. Okay. So I hope you understand how this is useful for a coverage algorithm where the robot has actually covered all the area, which has not left anything. Okay. Now, uh, this is another example where we are dividing it into a number of cells and uh, the exhaustive walk is following this cell 1, 2, 4, 2, 3. That is 1, 2, 4. So it is going from 1 to 2, then to 4. Then it is going from 4, it is going to 2 back and then it's going to 3, then 5, 6, it's going to 5, 6, then it goes back to uh, 5 again, then it goes to 7, then it goes to 8, so, sorry, 7 to 5, then to 8, 8 and then back to 1. As you can see that there could be more than one way of doing this, okay. So which is the most efficient and the optimal way? That is an interesting question that uh, in this particular case, suppose we are going like this, or we're going like this, which will be faster. In this particular case, it's a simple case, there's only one loop. Okay. Whereas in this case, there are two loops. Okay, there are loops in here. So which would be, and there's a dead end here, two of them there. Okay. So if you go into six, you have to come back this way. So this is an interesting question of uh, this coverage algorithms. Now, something that you would have noticed here is that when I said that I have to cover this, which is okay. But then how do I cover it? What kind of motion do I have in one cell? Let me consider this cell. Will the robot move like this? Okay, it has to cover every point, remember. Okay. Or should it start going around like that? Okay, which is a better way of covering it? That's an interesting question. Well, there are different ways by which you can do. For example, most decomposition is one way uh, of, uh, of dividing the cells. Okay, so you have this number of connected uh, cells okay so what i do is basically we look at the we look at the critical points that is the points at which the line is going to hit or change direction okay and then i divide it into a number of uh, cells so i have uh, changed this into a number of cells so connectivity of the slice in the free space changes at the critical point that we know and what we have done is these are my cells now, it's each cell can be covered by back and forth motions. So it simply does this and covers it out. Okay. Now, uh, let's uh, see this further. So incremental construction, how do we construct it? So basically, when we are constructing it, uh, we are starting with a straight line. Okay. And the straight line is sweeping from the left side, as you can see. And every time it gets a critical point, it forms this... Uh, it forms the next next cell. Okay, finally, we have uh, uh, from here we go here. The line is sweeping towards the right here, here, and we have covered all the cells. Okay. Now, how do we detect the critical points? So you can detect the critical points like in the previous case, wherever it is hitting a vertex or there is a change in gradient of the surface profile there. Then is the line going up and also down? Okay, that point will be a critical point here. Now, most decomposition in the previous case was being done by using a straight line. Okay, so what is the difference between that? Uh, sorry. So what is the difference between what we had just done in the cell decomposition here? Okay, between here and the Moore's way of doing things. Okay, so what is there? You see that this is a complete cover uh, here. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. So here, what we are doing is basically we are dividing it by straight lines and then we are going having motion like this. But in the Moore's case, we can divide it by, not by straight lines, only by straight lines, but we can divide it by other kind of curves also. Now let's see what happens if you start using this kind of a Moore's decomposition, where you are 
dividing this by using this uh, arcs. So we start from here and draw circles x squared plus y squared. It's like the circle is increasing. So we have a circle here. Now the circle increases, has one point there. Then the circle increases further, it has one more critical point there. It increases further, has a critical point there. So in the previous case, it was straight lines which was moving. Now it is circles which are moving. Okay, so the circle is simply increasing and it is hitting at this point, this point, this point. These are my critical points now. Okay, and now we have got different cells like before one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I can do the same thing to do the uh, coverage algorithm. So because they are circular, my motion is circular now. The robot is cleaning like this, then it goes like this. Okay, now I can do it in some other way also. Say, for example, uh, we can do mod of x plus mod of y. In this particular case, I'm dividing my cell into this rectangular fashion. And the robot is moving like this now, if you can see. Okay. So it comes here, does this, then goes there. So these are all ways by which you can do efficient planning. So it's an interesting question whether using the straight line would have been faster or the circle would have been faster. It depends on the geometry. Okay, it's difficult to say. So you actually have to see which one will give you the better. Now you can also use a tangent, tan of y by x. So from this point, straight lines are going off tangent to the curves here. Okay. And these are my different cells. So this is my one, two, three, four, like that. And my coverage algorithm was also is going to take, uh, is going to move this way. Okay. Okay, so it will move like this. So these are different ways of dividing the cell. They're all cell decompositions, different ways. Bushfire algorithm is uh, another way. Now this bushfire algorithm is very interesting because we are dealing with grids. Okay, now in grids, you know that in a computer, if you can divide this, uh, your workspace into grids and assign numbers, then the computer works very, very fast. It can do it very easily. Okay, as compared to putting concave and concave objects, finding the vertices, finding the uh, intersections. Whereas in this case, what we do in the bushfire algorithm is basically we assign this as one, okay, and the next grid will be assigned two, then it will be assigned three in that way. So this is one, 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 this is two, 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 this is my three. So basically what I'm going to get, I'm going to get these curves. Okay. So the objective is to be able to break the free space into a number of cells. And this, these are also called free cells or Voronoi regions using Bushfire algorithm. Okay. Bushfire algorithm I just explained uh, in the beginning of the class today. Okay that uh, if there is an obstacle here like this, I name this as 1, I name this as 1, the second one will become 2, the third one will become 3 in that order and wherever the highest numbers meet, that's your region. Now from here what we can see is that we have divided the full space into a number of points and uh, so this is my first point, second, second stage, third stage and fourth stage. So how many cells are there? So we can see that these are one, two, three and four cells and the black one is the optical cell. So I have basically got using cell decomposition, I have got uh, four cells. Now I can clean each of the cells one at a time. So the robot has uh, uh, the coverage algorithm basically starts covering, performing an exhaustive walk on each of the cells one at a time okay so today we basically today we looked at uh, we started off with roadmap method we just completed completed the silhouette method okay that is we pass the hyperplane get the silhouette curve and uh, see how to uh, how to uh, complete the roadmap to take the robot from some point to some other point okay. then after that we looked at uh, cell decomposition Cell decomposition is, uh, we looked at polygonal cell decomposition, then we looked at trapezoidal cell decomposition, then we look at the coverage algorithms. So these are all algorithms uh, which are used for the robot to go from one point to another point or for coverage. Okay. Now what you would notice here is that uh, this is basically a geometrical problem. Okay. And what is the input to the algorithm or the program is the geometry of the workspace. That means the coordinates of the vertices of the workspace and the vertices of the obstacles okay now uh, uh, so this gives you some idea that when you write a program for uh, either a simulation 
or in the case of a real robot which is going to go from some point to some other point how the program is written and uh, what is the output what is the input of the program okay and what is the output of the program and how it works so uh, today we'll stop here and next class we'll move on to uh, the next uh, set of methods thank you